Welcome to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. <laughs> Folks, you know... <laughs> you know, uh, America is changing so fast. Every day seems to bring shocking news that radically unsettles what we believe this country should be. And it's happened again. Because Taco Bell's latest tostada <laughs> features a giant <laughs> cheese it <laughs> All right? I think I speak for all Americans when I say... Um... <laughs> Um, oh. <laughs> I'm excited about this idea. Let's take a look. Behold! The snack of madness. It's like my dreams and my nightmares had a baby and then baptized it in ground beef. <laughs> the giant Cheez-It is 16 times larger than a normal Cheez-It <laughs> with the same taste and texture as a Cheez-It. So you won't lose any of that flavor that can only be described as it. <laughs> it's got real it flavor. It's made with real it. <laughs> Lewis, when I heard about this... What did you hear about? I was totally ready for the it to hit the fan. <laughs> but unfortunately, unfortunately, the giant cheese at Tostada is currently available at just one Taco Bell location in Irvine, California. Well, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I believe the giant Cheez-Its are a basic American right. <laughs> Access to this snack cannot be relegated to the states. I have to believe that this restriction is the work of the Crunchwrap Supreme Court and its radical justice, <laughs> Samuel Alberito. <laughs> I have to. I have to believe that. Mm. I have... How else? I mean... Speaking of big orange things that are bad for you... Yesterday, we heard from former president, Boob looks like a traitor! <laughs> like you, uh, he's been watching the January 6th hearings, and yesterday, the surprise hearing starred former White House aide Cassidy Hutchinson, seen here using the force to try to summon one of those cheese it tostadas. <laughs> Hutchinson was assistant to Chief of Staff Mark Meadows, so she saw everything that went on in the White House. She told the committee that, among other things, the former president knew his crowd was armed before unleashing them on the Capitol, attacked a member of security detail in an SUV, and most disturbingly of all, threw his lunch plate in rage. <laughs> well, you know what they say, you always hurt the bun you love. <laughs> now, no one thought... No one thought, really? Applause for that? Okay. <laughs> that is a low bar. Thank you very much. <laughs> no one thought this testimony uh, went well for the ex-president. One former Justice Department lawyer said Hutchinson's testimony contained credible nuggets of information <laughs> that would support a seditious conspiracy investigation, which means the former president could be betrayed by his closest confidant, credible nuggets. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> How do those nuggets taste? They taste credible. <laughs> I really believe they're chicken. <laughs> Hutchinson's testimony was such a game changer, even Fox News didn't know how to spin it. What was so compelling, I think, is, is how it was laid out. But the testimony in and of itself is really, really powerful. Sandra, did you still here? Indeed, yes, I am here. <laughs> That's right. Mm. That's quite the pause. Explains Fox News slogan, fair and... Indeed, yes, we are still here. <laughs> and... I just want to say, hey, John Roberts, way to throw Sandra under the bus. Sandra, are you still there? Because I sure wish I wasn't here. Uh, bring, bring, phone call, gotta go, smoke bomb! <laughs> it, uh... It did not get much better when Sandra finally managed to speak. Indeed, yes, I am here. <laughs> no, Brett, uh, to your point, I just wonder for the for the country watching this in this moment, uh, how much this changes what people believed or did not believe. 
That wasn't his point at all, Sandra. <laughs> I believe his point was very powerful testimony. Who cares if it changes what viewers believe? Your job is to report the news, not speculate how your audience is going to react. There's a reason Walter Cronkite didn't end each broadcast with this. And that's the way it is. Or is it? Hell if I know. <laughs> Thanks, Walter. Wonderful. I miss him. I miss him, baby. What else? Oh, things got even worse yesterday for the former president when Liz Cheney closed the hearings by raising concerns about possible witness tampering by an unknown person. <laughs> Who could it be? <laughs> been a long time. Been a while. Hey, been a wow. long time. Wow. Wow. How dumb do you have to be to do crimes while being investigated? Four other crimes. Okay, officer, I know I was driving drunk in this stolen car full of dead hobos. But before you arrest me, want to buy some crack? <laughs> Not surprisingly, yesterday's hearing seemed to get the former president all rankled to his cankles. He posted a flurry of messages on his troubled social media platform, Truth Social going right after the witness. I hardly know who this person, Cassidy Hutchinson, is, other than I heard very negative things about her, a total phony and leaker. She was the assistant to your chief of staff. <laughs> she was in every meeting taking notes. She worked 10 steps from the Oval Office. It reminds me of this statement from Snap and Crackle, we hardly know who this person, Pop, is. <laughs> Over... Sure. They're elves. We looked it up. They're elves. Over in the judicial branch, we're still reeling from the Supreme Court overturning Roe v. Wade, but we shouldn't overlook all the other bad decisions, especially the tire iron they've taken to the separation of church and state. Last week, they ruled that Maine cannot exclude religious schools from a public tuition reimbursement program. Okay, that's not good. Also, what kind of religious schools do they have in Maine? Yeah, welcome to the Church of Lobster Day Saints. <laughs> Put a piece of saltwater taffy in the past waffle cone and open your fish fry menus to the Book of Chowder. <laughs> and that was not the only ruling where the conservative majority shoved their religion down our state. They also ruled in favor of a public high school football coach who prayed at midfield. <laughs> Illegal procedure. 12 apostles on the field. <laughs> the center... <laughs> there's nothing the guys up in the sound booth like better than a whistle. <laughs> Is this on? <laughs> At the center of the case was former coach Joe Kennedy, seen here about to yank the First Amendment away from Charlie Brown. <laughs> Kennedy... Kennedy sued his school district after they fired him for engaging in public prayers on the field while flanked by student athletes after games. According to the school, players' parents complained their children on the team felt compelled to participate. Oh, I'm sure the students didn't feel any pressure. Coaches famously don't expect players to follow their leads. Johnson, that's your fifth fumble. Take a lap if you want. You are the captain of your own journey. <laughs> in the majority uh, decision here, Justice Gorsuch writes that the coach, quote, offered his prayers quietly while his students were otherwise occupied. Okay, quietly, that sounds okay. Let's check out those quiet prayers. Yes, Lord. We love you, Jesus! Jesus! Okay, I enjoy praying. But Jesus. <laughs> now, the praying got even less private during one homecoming game uh, when the coach was joined by a state legislator and the media. Spectators jumped over the fence to reach the field and people tripped over cables and fell. And school band members were knocked over. The next night, they held a prayer vigil for the prayer victims. <laughs> Thoughts and prayers. <laughs> but if the court believes... Sure. Sure. 
If the court believes this type of Christian ritual is okay for public schools, then I'm sure they'll be fine with every religion going varsity. I can't wait for the satanic cheerleaders. D-E-V-I-L. Come on, T, let's burn in hell. Sacrifice a goat. We got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Congressman Adam Kinzinger and the star of The Boys, Carl Urban. Stick around, everybody.